Hey, Randy. Hey, Patricia. We'll do a quick Skype, Twitter, the whole bit. So give me a second here. I know I sound just like Marcus. Wait a minute. My show's starting. Let me do it now. Unfortunately, as Randy discovered, the I did something wrong when I put the link in the first time, so I had to fix it. It wasn't you the first time, Randy. It was me. Hey, Janelle. Okay, I picked this topic today because I needed it too. It's actually, sometimes what you'll find is that the weeks when you're having the most fun are also the most stressful weeks you have, which is kind of what's going on this week. I volunteered to do some work for somebody, um, thought I was gonna, it was a simple fix, it turned into a much bigger project. So I spent, had a lot of time going to that. And then I'm leaving for Miami on Friday because the, it's our big Empower event this coming weekend. Is it also Super Bowl weekend? I was out at the store trying to get stuff today to leave the kids with a packed refrigerator and stuff. And everything looked like it was Super Bowl stuff. It helps if – oh, you've got me muted, not that I'm muted. I, you guys can hear me, right? Okay. Um, yeah, it looked like everything was Super Bowl stuff. So I guess I'm flying Super Bowl weekend as long as I can get out of here. So stress? Me? Stress? Yeah! Stressed, yes, definitely. <laughs> Start with the... Okay, got a blog post to put up. This one is both good for a laugh and a very important lesson. And in this case, it's not a self-development lesson. I called it a self-preservation lesson. It actually sounds more like something I would have written in my days when I was doing information security. Because, folks, there are a lot of there's no way around it. There's bad people out there that are out to scam you. And I tried to teach everyone a new term that you may not be familiar with because it's a very fancy way of saying they lie. It's called social engineering. Now, in my sample here, this is a real sample. All I did was go in and take some of the Facebook time stamps and change the actual name. Uh, don't know who the real guy is. Didn't want to give him any press, but oh, somebody was here an hour ahead of time. <laughs> didn't have it, didn't have it going an hour ahead of time. Um, or what was I saying? When you get down to the conversation in it, he really thought I was going to respond and give him something with that cockamamie story he told. And the problem is that there are people out there that will, whether it be just because they want to believe it. I mean, we all know people that have gone through really tough situations where, wow, I won 50000 You know, you just want to believe it and maybe do things that you shouldn't do. So... If we can share the story, let everybody get a good laugh at it, the, the, the jokester with the uh, – I, I have to look this up. It's the tax 
Facebook charity lottery for the year with the collaboration of the IBC Imperia Company. Say what? Just a real joke. Be careful of people out there. It's my public service message for today. When we share knowledge with each other and with other people, and it just it, it helps people to stop and think before they respond and actually give away some information that they shouldn't. We'll defeat people like this. Who well, I started to say, the, the term social engineering comes out of the information security world. And in a true case of social engineering, these people are good. It's not like this guy who you, you read his comments and they're bizarre. They can truly truly make you think that they're who they say they are we had it it almost seemed unfair to do it to our own employees but we needed to test it because in my previous life for anyone that doesn't know i actually worked in information security at a bank i was the people side of information security i did not crawl under things wiring things or do any of that part although i knew what they were and I did have, I took all the tests the, ga the guys took. Our department really did break down along male, female lines. The guys were all on the techie side and the girls were all on the compliance side. I don't know why that was, but it was the truth. Um, but I was in charge of compliance and policies, procedures. And one of the biggest things that I did was set up the training company for the entire bank and made sure that everybody took their training, which was, it, it, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but it was a lot of fun every year to go through. And when you got that very last person to take their test, it really, really, really felt good. One of the things we did as a lead up to it, though, was hired a company to test to see if after all the training that we'd done on what to do and what not to do, if people would recognize somebody calling up or sending them an email claiming to be somebody of importance or some or a customer that needed help or something and see if they divulge any information in a very controlled environment. Um, it was a company that specialized in it, had insurance, if anything went wrong. Oh, cool. Um, and because of that, we discovered how how devastatingly good these people are, and these were the good guys. But they in in front of security, you call them the black hats and the white hats. The black hats are the hackers that do it for their own benefit or to get paid for it. The white hats are the guys that are testing on behalf of the company. Although there's some white hats that do things without the permission, thinking they're going to be heroes, and they turn into black hats. It, 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 a lot of rigor moral on that but they some of the things they did is they call they call up they would pretend they were from the legal department and yell at somebody for posting something on Facebook that should have never been posted and, and go off on them and well you better give me your name and your password right now so I can go in there and fix that and people would actually do it if I mean, I knew what was going on, and listening in on some of these conversations, it was downright scary how convincing they were. And I knew, I knew what they were doing. I knew the scripts they were going to use, and it was still very convincing. So the person that was being tested, and we didn't really look at it as, as we weren't really testing the individual person. We were testing our training over the course of the year to see how well random people reacted to it. Although we picked a few very non-random people in like the executives admins and a couple other key people that we were really concerned about their departments. So we picked somebody with enough information in the department that they could disclose something if they weren't, if the training hadn't properly worked. And we found that even with all the training we did. And I'm telling you, I was proud of my training. I thought I did a really good job putting those programs together. But when it came right down to it, you're not prepared for 
these people that can manipulate and take the, in general, people want to be helpful. It's kind of the way we're built. We want to be helpful. So they'll, they either approach on, they're a, a poor customer in a lot of trouble or an executive in a lot of trouble. And if they don't get this done right away, they could lose their job and da, 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 da. And can you help my, me by doing this? And they'd ask for sensitive information that shouldn't be disclosed. And more often than not, and it wasn't just our bank. We went back and we did follow up and increased our training, et cetera, et cetera. But across the board, they, they gave us the statistics of how well it works across the board. And it, it's really scary how well people that are after information can get it out of people. There's another study they did in London for free pens. Not even an expensive Parker pen or anything. Or uh, um, the, uh, the really nice ones. I can't think of the name of them now. We're talking like a 15 cent pen. People would give out their user ID and password on the street to some stranger for a pen. So I'm on my old soapbox at this point. Be careful. It's a thin line sometimes between wanting to believe in abundance and, yeah, you're going get, to get checks in the mail just because, hey, you've manifested it and hey, these people are out to scam me. If I give them this information they're asking for, not only will I not have what I right now, but they will kill my credit. They will do everything within their power to gain anything they can from me, including wiping out bank accounts, identity theft, all sorts of things. So with that, I will get off my soapbox. When you have time, read it, take a good laugh at this guy who is an example of how not to do this on top of it, it was so recognizable. Tell Zach I love him. And Alex, I love her too. I'm glad you, I'm glad I'm building out a fan base here. Um, I will get off my soapbox, but when you get a chance, read it, share it, really pass the information around. Yeah, see, Brenda's got a perfect example there. You can think it's somebody you know, and it isn't even them. It's because of what you can do with technology, you can impersonate people. You can create a whole new personas. I mean, just because the picture shows a fairly pleasant-looking man or woman who's saying what a friend they want to be with you, doesn't mean that's who they are. And who knows, maybe the bad guys are pleasant looking people, but it's what's behind them, their intentions that really count. So my soapbox for today, I even sent a copy to my friends in information security and said, guys, you need to pay attention to this. You're going to love it. I know there's a Skype virus that goes around every so often that gets people. And you start getting Skype messages where they've managed to hack into other people's Skype accounts. OK, so moving on. It is scary, Erica. And that's what I said. It, it's a thin line because Attitude is so important to our success, and if we let it scare us to the point that we're not ready to take positive action on our careers, it can truly do damage. In the meantime, if you're aware of it and you take proper actions, like, like Janelle suggested, change your passwords every so often. Don't use the same password for everything. Never, ever, ever disclose your password to anyone. Make them difficult passwords. I mean, your child's birthday is one that anyone that is trying to break into your account will guess within 10 minutes. They go through all those things. 
for making long passwords, there's a couple things. If you've got um, like LastPass, and I think RoboForm does it too, they will generate strong passwords for you, random K, upper and lower case numbers, the whole bit. Another way of doing it is you take a really long sentence. You know, create some quote that's just yours that you love, and then pick every third letter, the first letter of every word, um, toss some numbers in there or something. So it's something where you can remember your phrase because you remember the actual quote, but then you have to know the formula for picking out what are the characters that are actually in your password. Those are all ways of constructing a strong one that you'll be able to remember later. I happen to like LastPass myself because it's a secure storage. Um, somebody in here used RoboForm, I think. It might have been in another group I was in where they were talking about RoboForm, which is another password vault so that you can construct really, really strong passwords that are secured and encrypted and yet be able to remember and re-log into a, into a website after you've done such a thing. Because if you have all really, real strong passwords, it can sometimes be difficult to remember what those passwords were, which is another cause of stress when you can't get into your accounts. This week, though, as I started to say before, and then I, I, I doing open conversation loops without even trying today, I'm going down to Miami on Friday. I'm there's a team mastermind session after that that we have got tons of homework to do ahead of time so that when we go down there, we're ready for the workshops they're doing. I had to go get my new phone. My old phone had really died. And look, look, I have a, see? I got a Galaxy 4. So I took care of that today. I also did some things to de-stress today things that were just for me. Now, now I couldn't have moved them up. I was going to say if I would, I could have, the phone I probably could have done last week and it would have taken some of the stress off of today. I wanted to get my hair done today so that I didn't go Mom, down. What did you do to my clothes? What? The clock says 10.30 and. The yeah, your clock has been three. I'm sorry. Hang on a second. Your clock was three hours blinking, off the whole time. Blinking. O-D off on my thing, blinking over and over, I'm like screaming, I don't know what that means. I don't know what, that one wasn't happening when I had it. Maybe, but the, the clock I didn't change. That, that was another stress that we had. It's been cold here. My car didn't want to go, so I had to borrow my daughter's car today. Um, okay, so let, let me go back now. Stressor. My house is always busy. I'm, I'm sure everybody else has houses like this too, where to get some time to concentrate can be difficult. It's another stressor that we live with in life. Planning out your work ahead of time. Like I said, the phone I could have probably done last week, but I wanted my hair freshly done and my nails and a pedicure freshly done for going away this weekend. However, that pedicure today, that was the bomb. It was wonderful. He is so good. He massages your feet. That's something where the time I spent there today was worth every second of it to take the stress off, to just relax, to block everything else out, soak my feet, get them all nice and soft again because, believe me, sandpaper had nothing on what my feet were beginning to feel like get my toenails all nicely shaped again. Now, middle of winter, polar vortex coming through again. I did sit there longer than I normally would have. So I had to build extra time into it today. And I accepted that. So part of what you need to do in your whole distressing is to accept what's real is real and not fight with it. You know, it's cold out. Got to just deal with it. Here's some other ideas for taking the stress out of your daily life, regardless of what is causing that stress. 
go for a 10 minute walk. Now, if you're in the middle of a polar vortex, it may not be the best time to do an outside walk. I know some people have talked about just making laps around the inside of their house. If you belong to a gym, go to the gym. Most shopping mall have mall walkers. There's actually groups at our malls that meet before the malls open. And I think they said if you do the full route in the one mall, it's actually two miles of walking. Much more than your 10 minute walk for most people. Okay, next one is breathe deeply. Move south there, there we go, there's a good de-stressor. <laughs> breathe deeply, so it's just sit back, relax, and feel the calming effect that has on you. Because when you get stressed, you probably could hear it in me as I was rushing around here, you start breathing very shallow, you start breathing very quickly, you might or may not be getting close to hyperventilating, but when you take that few minutes, it brings the oxygen into your lungs, it slows down your heart rate, it gives you a new lease on life. And that's just from two deep breaths I did there. If you do it for a few minutes, like two minutes worth, it will usually take care of a headache. It usually revives you if you were getting that real dull and feeling. Just real, feels really good. Very good, you know. Now, did you, when you quit smoking, did you end up getting sick? That's what happened to me. And the way the nurse explained it to me was that your lungs have been overcompensating for so long in producing mucus, I guess it is, that when you quit, they, they're in overdrive still, and it took a while for them to clear up. So I ended up, I didn't think it was quite fair, but I ended up getting sick. Once I got over that, and that was the secondhand, that was the secondhand smoke, no less. That wasn't even me. That was when Joe finally quit. So understand that this might happen to you. And if it does, you can deal with it. You will get over it. You may need to see the doctor. Take care of yourself. Take care of your health. And you will feel much better. Here's another one. Notice how many of these suggestions are things that we do as part of the goal setting process anyway. So if we've been working on our goals all along, you may be doing some of these things. True, quit smoking, your food will taste better. So here's another one. Eat a snack mindfully. A lot of times what we do with eating, especially stress eating, we may do it, but we're not actually paying attention to that bag of chips. We're just without thinking about what we're doing. So if you're going to eat something, take the time to stop, concentrate, be in the moment on what you're doing, and then move on from there. And you'll find that that works as a de-stressor, gives you some more energy. Um, I'm not gonna go into diet here. Work with a dietitian or do your own research. Pick healthy foods to make your snack out of. <clears throat> this is one that I loved. Although, I'm looking around right now, and except for my two Christmas trees, I've killed the plants again. <laughs> but this one is buy yourself a plant. Because house plants work as air purifiers, and they can actually help calm you down. Now, I went the other route for de-stressors, and I've got cats and dogs. <laughs> and unfortunately, my cats love to kill my plants. 
hopefully as the last one gets out of kittenhood, I'll be able to grow some more plants because I've lost my plants. Here's one that is good for all of us because I know how much time I spend in front of the community. They, I think they play with them. I don't think they're actually eating them because I know house plants are not necessarily good for dogs or cats to eat. I think they start playing with them and they egg the dogs on and I end up with ripped up plants. <coughs> Munch on them and knock them off. And yeah. And I don't think it's actually eating, but yeah, they kind of rip, rip them apart. Step away from the screen. They've shown that uninterrupted commute computer time is associated with stress, lost sleep, and depression. So step away from the screen. Okay, now this one, everybody can try it and see what it does for you. This is a Nam Yoga hand trick. And if you apply pressure to the space between your second and third knuckles, it's the joint at the base of your pointer and middle fingers. So right here. If everyone wants to try this and tell me if it works for them. I, I wasn't actually getting it. But it, it's supposed to be an acupressure point that activates a nerve that loosens the area around the heart. So any of that fluttery feeling you feel when you're nervous will end up going away. I don't know. I have not working for me yet, but I wasn't having a fluttery feeling, I guess. <clears throat> Try hanging up your phone and turning it off. <coughs> Believe it or not, talking on the phone can actually raise your blood pressure. One of my favorites. Put on some music. Now, it could be soothing music. It could be subliminals. Like I have a lot of subliminals that are relaxa and relaxation, guided relaxation. Or it could just be fun music. I had Bon Jovi blasting yesterday. Love Bon Jovi. See the smile? It's hard to be stressed out when you're smiling like that. <laughs> News, the, watching the news can be very stressful. Of course, when you're clueless on what's going on in the world, if somebody's asking you, well, what about this and this? And you said, to them, um, gee, don't know, hadn't thought about it. You may look a little bit clueless, but I usually just scan my home page on MSN to see if, you know, have we gone to war? Should I know about something like that? As long as there's nothing that major going on. I try to stay away from the things that are going to stress and depress that you don't have any control over. I know going back to 9-11 in the World Trade Center, watching that put me into a severe state of depression. And I was blue I couldn't get away from the TV screen. I just sat there watching it nonstop. I couldn't do anything about it. Um, and I, I did know there were people I knew that were in there. So part of, it was almost a morbid fascination, I was trying to find out who I knew that was there and did they get out or not. But my parents' neighbors, he worked in there. And it took him, I think, 24 hours to get home because when they rerouted people, they sent them Staten Island, and then you couldn't get from there to where he had to go, and it was a very long and roundabout way. I also knew from almost the beginning of the day that one of my brother's close friends was on the plane that went down, in the, um, it was the one out of Boston. So that was the one I think that went into the, the first tower. When you find yourself glued 
to the TV like that, go back to number one and go take that walk. Get yourself away from it. If you don't have the control over the situation to let yourself get drawn into the deep depression that can come out of it. Say a prayer. Pray definitely. Pray for those people. Bye. Good night. But Welcome back. Gluing yourself nonstop and watching it over and over, no matter what the disaster is. He was very lucky, Brenda, um, because the plane was empty. Max girlfriend was on it because the, he was flying out to California, and I guess he had a layover there, and she got to go for free. So yeah, we lost both of them on one day. But. We'll move on from that because to this, the, the certain things to this day, exactly, you, you you could get so numb to it and yet you still found yourself drawn to it. You're just sinking in, actually going beyond stress and sinking into depression, just it being there nonstop. Shh, lazy, hush. Hush, baby. She's ringing the bells for me. So back to put on some music. Pick your pick your favorite music, whether it be something really upbeat, whether it be some heavy rock music, whatever it is that's going to allow you to let loose a bit and enjoy your surroundings. It could be something that's very calming. Okay, easy listening for birds. That's a cool one, Barb. I have a whole set of nature sounds. My girls can't stand it. That's, that sets them on edge. But I find it real cool to put it on and just let it play in the background as some white noise. You don't really listen. It just kind of adds that soothing effect to it. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to put the dogs out. You guys got to go out? Okay, Sean, I'm putting the dogs out. Okay, let's dress her for the show. Dogs went out, middle of the show, every time. Okay, here's a, here is a suggestion that I love. Now, you don't want to overdo this one. This is one of those balance and everything. But have one piece of candy. The yeah, I, I have to read this one to you because I, I don't. It's eating or drinking something sweet is soothing because it stems the production of the stress hormone glucocorticoid. And I'm sure I said that one wrong. Anyway, having that one piece of candy, whether it be a Hershey Kiss or a peppermint candy or another reasonably sized treat. So you don't want to go out and put a lot, a whole pound of chocolate in you, but just a little bit actually cuts down on the stress hormone. Chew a piece of gum. This one I found interesting. Chewing a piece of gum actually helps relieve stress. Here's one. Now, again, balance and everything, because if you spend all day doing this, you're going to be more stressed the next day, the work you didn't get done. But take the time to watch a viral video. These videos that get passed around and make us laugh are actually good for us. Ah, so lock up the candy and just put it somewhere where it's very difficult to get it more than one piece at a time. Take out your one piece and then lock it up again. 
a lot of times if we put enough of a barrier between us and whatever it is we don't want to do that forces us to truly stop and think before we do it, it's enough. We when we were talking before about consciously being in the moment when you eat the snack, as opposed to that mindless, open the bag of chips and just keep shoving them in. Stop and think about it. And when you've got that barrier, that help, it helps. And if it doesn't help, then it's easier just not to have it in the house and pick other ways. <clears throat> Once again, they come back and say, seriously, turn off your phone. <laughs> Eat a banana or a potato. Uh, it's the potassium <laughs> that helps. Now, I am not a yoga person, so I don't know what this pose is. If anyone does know, please tell me. It's try eagle pose. It's a, that one is supposed to be a stress reliever as it opens the shoulders, relieves neck tension, and does away with many of the physical symptoms of stress. I've tried yoga. I've never gotten very good at it. Do a craft or get a hobby. Uh, knitting is one that they're recommending here. How many people here know how to knit? I do. I taught the girls how to knit. In fact, I still have the first Christmas Joe and I were going out together, I knit him a sweater. And we, to this day, I mean, that was 1980, I still have the sweater. Crocheting goes faster. But for a sweater, for a guy, knitting was a much better choice. It took me a few months to get it done. I'd work on it whenever he wasn't around. And there's, not only is the actual action of doing it something that you, you'll find relaxing. He used to be a football player. Was it Rosie Greer? might have been, who actually took up knitting because it relaxed them. Some other stress reducers. Take a bath. You know the Calgon commercial? Calgon, take me away. I never tried knitting and reading a book, but I have knit and watched TV. TV you don't have to stare at the screen. I just had to be careful because my stitches would get really tight if I wasn't careful. And your piece of material is supposed to be this big, it come out really tiny because I'd make it way too tight. Um, some of the things, if you're going to do the bath idea, light some candles, aromatherapy, bubbles. Bubbles are fun in a bathtub, and they can add this, a more soothing effect. Like Epsom salt is supposed to be really good for your muscles as you're taking your bath. These three sort of go together here. Meditation, whether it be full-fledged traditional meditation or a more guided meditation or a guided visualization, prayer done as meditation, all of those things help. Scrapbooking, card making, those are great. Because there's a few things that lead to it. One, it's the actual activity, but again, in doing a craft like that, you're actually producing something that makes you feel good when you're done. Progressive muscle relaxation, it shows up on a few lists when I was doing the research earlier. So starting at either your toes and working your way up, or starting at your head and working your way down. Either way will help you to relax, help you to de-stress. And you just concentrate on, the, on it one muscle at a time, concentrate on tightening the muscle, 
and then concentrate on relaxing. Music again. Music seems to make everybody's list. This is one I like. Get things done. Nice simple one there, right? Make a list of what needs to be done and cross them off one at a time. And if anyone is interested, this one gives me the perfect lead into. There's a concept called Freedom Day. And we tried to do it a couple years ago. No, maybe it wasn't that long. It was only a year ago. But it was before Spreecast and GVO made it so easy to have a conference room. The idea is you get a group of people together, and then each of you comes up with a list of 10 things that have been on your to-do list that would take you no more than an hour to get done. Because a lot of times, we'll do our big projects, and we'll do the, the things that really take a lot of work, and there's those dumb little things, cleaning off a shelf on your bookcase, um, cleaning out the junk mail and going through it and making sure that you didn't miss anything. It just take an hour or so, but we keep putting them off because we've got more important things to do. So you make your list of eight to ten things, depending on how long you're going to do it for. And then every hour on the hour, the whole group gets together. So you, you pick a date, obviously. <laughs> I'm going to skip that out. But you pick a date. No, you and I, Brenda, were the only two that I could interest in at that time. So if I can get some more people that want to do it this time, I'll, I'll run it on a Saturday. Every hour then you get together, and the idea is that the peer pressure and or support, whichever way you want to look at it, as you come back at the top of each hour and report whether you finished off what you did or not, helps you to clean up your list. So you pick, it's going to do a Saturday, and it's just you start like 8, 9 in the morning, and each hour you do the next thing on your list. Top of the hour you come back, you meet in the conference room, and you report back that you finished off what was on your list. Kind of simple concept. Call it Freedom Day, because suddenly you've got these 10 things that have been energy sappers. Because when we have something that's undone like that, it really, really, really saps our energy. Uh, Justin talks about people that are energy vampires. But undone things like that can sap our energy and add to our stress level. So. I don't keep putting it off. See, I'm, I don't feel good about getting housework done. It, housework to me doesn't isn't a reward in and of itself. For people at are they, they feel much better when they get it done. For me, it's just great. I can cross it off my list, that type of good feeling. But just finishing it itself doesn't actually make me feel better. So if we can get... I'll, po I'll post the question in the Skype room after this. If I can get enough people interested, maybe no, I will be back on February 1st. We'll pick a date in February if I can get enough people interested. Then we'll do a Freedom Day. Here is probably one of the biggest tips. It, it, it's not even on de-stressing. It's to avoid the stressed out feeling entirely. Learn to say no. You don't have to do everything that everybody asks you to do. Sometimes it is more to your benefit and theirs to just say, no, I'm sorry. I'm already booked. I can't do that for you. If you can even offer them a suggestion on who or how they can get that done, all the better. But you don't have to do that. It's not your responsibility to do that. We tend to feel a little guilty sometimes when we say no to someone. 
So giving them the, I can't do that, but I know someone that can, may make you feel better about saying no. But you're not doing them a service when you say yes to something that then puts you under so much stress that you're miserable, that you can't do the job that really needs to be done on whatever it is. So you're better off, they're better off when it's just, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Don't over apologize, don't over explain. We find ourselves doing that a lot. Simple, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It doesn't fit in my schedule. Exercise comes up on a lot of lists. We, talk, we did the go for a walk before, but even a full workout, that's great. <coughs> Find a quiet spot and enjoy nature. Exactly, Nick. And it could be that the reason it doesn't fit in your schedule is because you want to go on your walk or you want to go take the time. The, the picture that goes with this one is this beautiful overview of a lake, maybe the ocean, from up on a hill. And you want to just go take the time to commune with nature, to enjoy the beautiful world that the Lord's given us, to breathe the fresh air. And that is a perfectly good use of your time. You don't need to be doing somebody else's work just because they need it done. Exactly. Natural sunlight. I know a lot of people that suffer from seasonal affectation disorder. I don't think that I actually officially suffer from it, but when you've gone through so many gray days in a row, it's draining. Even if you're not officially diagnosed with SAD, it's a draining experience. So when there's time to get out there in the natural sunlight, Take advantage of it. Now, I have to laugh because I've, I had a few different lists that I pulled up to do the research for tonight's show. And while that first list kept saying, hang up, turn your phone off, hang up, turn your phone off, this one has phone a friend. Balance in all things. Hey, Jen? Jen? Dogs are barking, and I'm on my show. Um, balance in all things. If you find that all the talking on the phone is stressing you out, hang up. If you find that it makes you feel better, pick it up. You, it, it's one of these areas where you need to know yourself, and you need to know your own rhythms, because sometimes you're going to want to talk, and sometimes that whole idea of talking is just more than you can bear when you know there's so many other things going on and, and you start getting a fuzzy feeling and you're trying to write notes while they're talking so you're not paying attention to them. That's the time to hang up. Other times you're going to want to be able to reach out. Keep in mind that other people are as stressed as you are, so give them the same consideration that you'd like them to give you. Once again, music, music, music. This last idea is the idea of asking yourself questions. If Whatever it is that's stressing you out doesn't get done. Five years from now, how much will it matter? Most times, five years from now, whatever the, the major thing is we're working on today, may not seem that important. I know when memories of my corporate job are, are fresh in my mind today, if we were sick any individual day in my department, 
it probably wouldn't have had a big effect on the bank. However, if we didn't do our job at all, five years from now, it would have been a really big deal. We were a very strategic department. Making sure everyone got trained wasn't a, this moment, it has to be done. Now, there were some things in the job that were. You know, if, if there was a breach or something, yeah, we had to jump on things like that right away to limit everybody's liability. But for the most part, the things I was doing with processes and procedures, a day or two was not going to make a difference. Not getting done at all five years from now, it would make a difference. But put things in perspective. Take a deep breath and go ahead then and go for it. So that's my list, folks. What do you think? Anyone else have some? Oh, I like that. Do something silly. Yeah, there you go. Something that's going to make you laugh. We do have, if anyone is interested tonight, here, our prosperity team hangout tonight is covering how to use Craigslist in your marketing. So if anybody is interested in it, let me get you the link for that. It's how to get 30 to 50 leads a day in five minutes on Craigslist. And I will, you guys are all on my mailing list already. Control C, Control V. How many people, how many people went out and watched the I Am a Champion video last week that was the warm up to last week's? Prosperity team hangout. I can't screen share on here. Well, last time I tried screen sharing, it didn't work that well anyway. Oh, they took the watch. <coughs> You've seen it before? I've seen it before too, but I, I still rewatched it. I find myself chanting right along with it. I am a champion. Who are you? I am a champion. It's one of those ones, it's kind of like an anthem song where you want to just do the fist pump in the air and get, get in there with them and yeah. Swearing is, be careful who you swear around. You may stress the other person out. But yep, sometimes just letting loose with this string. You just feel better after it. So does anyone have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, or ideas for future episodes? Now, that being said, future episodes, there will not be a show next week because next week I am traveling and I can never be sure what type of internet connection I'm going to have. So if I'm at my mom's house, I could not get internet there to save my life. When I was over my sister's, it, was, it wasn't too bad. I don't know which one that is. I have to check that out. Um, so we won't do a show next week. If anyone's got any ideas for things they'd like to see me cover, I pick a lot from things people ask me or things that I find that I could use in my own life. Like this whole de-stressing one, that's something that I just needed with everything going on this week. And people, are you done? Have you finished this yet? Did you do this? I'm like, did I have to do that? So, again, take it one day at a time, one breath at a time, and enjoy it. And if anyone's got any ideas, just shoot me a, a recommendation in the Skype room because maybe your idea will trigger somebody else's thoughts so we can share those. And I'm not seeing any other comments there. So with that, guys, I am going to click on Janelle's link so I don't lose track of that.
<laughs> she's precious. I didn't even see what it is yet, but she's precious. <coughs> oh, that'd be great to know. And with that, then we'll call it a night. I hope you all have a great week. I will be online on and off, but it's going to be kind of spotty. I'm flying out early Friday morning, and we're going to pretty much have a jam-packed schedule the whole time I'm down there. And then I'm going to unwind for a few days with my mom and my sister. So Good. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you all soon. Good night, everyone.